So you want to be a chicken farmer? <laughs> You're so funny. First of all, you have to know math. And then you have to have a large bank account. Because why? Math is involved. And when math is involved, you kind of grow cross-eyed because you see another breed that you want or you found a breed that is perfect for your personality, your farm, everything, and then you feel like you have to buy more, you know, and you have this addiction to continue doing this. And then you end up having to pay for more things like coops and feeders and nesting boxes and buckets because you have to carry everything everywhere. And then you have to figure out if you're going to allow them to sit on eggs and hatch or are you going to hatch, which all costs money. And I tell every single person that ever comes to the farmer's market that if you want to be a chicken farmer, even if it was five hens, no roosters, no nothing, the smallest thing you possibly have, you can't free range five chickens. Hawks will take them for dinner. That's a given. Doesn't matter what state you're in, it will happen. Um, or fox or raccoon. Oh, raccoons or the neighbor's dog, or somebody's cat that got dropped off at your house. It happens, nature happens. Thus, the reason why only a few of these guys have names and the rest of them have numbers because I'm trying not to be attached to 80 chickens. Yes, I have 80 chickens. My husband knows I have 80 chickens and I hear it. And I would love to be able to process about 30 or 40 of these guys and put them in my freezer. Especially my I am Samani that are the all black birds that are like right here. Not the guinea. She's a keeper. Not that's monster right there. See how big he is? He's the dad of a lot of these rooster roulettes that I have. The chicks that I have, they're in the garage. He's the dad of. He's mostly cream leg bar and I have no idea. I'm thinking maybe 33, which is a one fibromyelinistic gene rooster that I have that is an I am Samani supposed breed but I think he was crossed with something else and he's absolutely gorgeous and he's huge. I'm going to show you something funny because these boys love to be in the trees. Can you see them in the trees right there? Now they're bouncing around. They're just bouncing around in the trees. Jumping up into the trees. Having a good old time. And you have to have testing. What's testing? The National Poultry Improvement Program, MPIP, which says, guess what? I don't have any diseases. I don't carry the avian flu. I don't have Merrick's disease. I don't have this disease, that disease, any kind of chicken disease that would travel from one to the other. Excuse me, I have to yell at her. Little girl, that's enough. Shh. No talking back. I will put you on camera. And there's little girl right here yelling. She's been yelling for her mate for the last six months, which he's been gone for the last six months. So they're just chilling because they all got full bellies, sitting on pieces of tree that have fallen, having a good old time, waiting for the sun to fall. You have to have a good net. Fishing net is my favorite net because anything bigger than that little teeny tiny hole, guess what? <laughs> it's gone and you're running. And I'm sorry I'm pushing 55. I'm not running after a chicken. I don't care how much I love it, how much I want to sell it. I'm not running. Hashtag lazy woman chicken farmer. That's me. But because of my laziness, I have quality birds. Like, this is Blacktail. He is a pure Swedish flower hen. He was attacked by coyote, coyotes, 
that came in the back of our property, knocked over the coop when he was just a small little baby pullet and chewed off his toe in the middle on the right hand and broke his right pinky toe. He has a brother that's missing a toe and a sister that's missing all of her toes and we call her Frodo. And they're perfectly content with their little handicap. They kind of walk a little funny, but it doesn't stop him from doing what he's got to do. Are you going to show me how you can crow? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Blacktail, are you? God, you're so funny. You are. We do have a little bit of frostbite on the tips of his comb. And that's just because of where he sleeps is on a three foot high roosting post. And he probably did not understand that he needed to tuck his head inside of his feathers to keep the frost away. But I'm okay with that. If he's not showable, he's breedable, and he's a great landscaper because I have a lot of those landscapers here. Everybody's quiet because I'm walking around. Yeah. I have some that have been here for five years. My little cream light bar. Yeah. Been here five years. Some of them have only been here since last summer because that's when they got hatched. Mostly the rooster roulettes. Those are my favorite because I know who the mama is, but I do not know who the daddy is until they're hatched. And there are some that I have no idea what they ever will be because of their colors, but they're pretty. So, but it takes time. Every day takes time. You have to come out and feed. You have to come out and water. It doesn't matter if you have anything automatic. You still have to take care of your birds. And it doesn't matter if you have a huge expense or a little tiny pocket change. You got to make do with what you got to make do. And sometimes you have to just puzzle it together to make it work. Like sticking in sticks so that she can get up there. Because she's going to go up there and go underneath, underneath this. She will go underneath that for the end of the night and that's where she will sleep. Why? Because she's the low hen of this coop. So she's fighting for position and she will actually sleep on the outside of the coop, but she's underneath the tarps and the sailcloth material. So she will stay dry and she'll stay warm because she's literally six inches above everybody else below her. No, nope. Here's a rooster roulette. Let me see if I can catch him. There he is. I've got this kennel over here with some plastic on it. I can't zoom in. And he's gone. Yeah. I got this big boy. Hi. He was born last summer. So he's still little. They all make noise like they're all going to get killed by this one chicken that's flying around. I haven't figured that part out yet. But they sure do talk about it a lot. But my farm is six acres and my animals are on about two and a half probably and my bees my bees are way over here i think i'm in the right area way over here on the other side of the property next to my neighbors they're not really next to them but they're just in the other part of the property on the other side of the creek so It's fun, it's challenging, it's disappointing when you have death. It's agonizing when one is sick and you don't know if they're gonna make it or not. Um, it's rewarding when you hatch one 
and you have a hen that becomes broody, sits on eggs, and becomes a great mom. That's like really cool to watch. It's neat to see how your birds turn out, especially my I am Samani, because I have some that have a blue sheen. I have some that have a green sheen. I have some that are a mixture of both. So it's kind of neat to see how they do. If my I am Samani do not fit the proposed standard of perfection, which is if I had the ideal bird, it would be this, bum, 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 which there are a lot of people out there that have the ideal bird. And all of them are based upon this list for the perfection. And if none of mine fit that, I throw them out and put them into the egg production group. When the egg production group happens, that's where I get my rooster roulette because I have an I am Samani breeding with a black copper moran or a cream leg bar, which makes green eggs, just letting you know. Um, I'll have one breed with a wine dot. I have a few of those. Um, I've got a few rooster roulettes that are half cream leg bar and half I am Samani. And I get an olive colored egg that is so dark. It is beautiful. Actually, she lays spotted olive colored eggs which is pretty cool but when you do that then you have to sit there and keep those separate i still have every single one of my birds tested twice a year because they're all organic they're all pasture raised they have room to run dig chase everything else um if my health would have been better over the last, oh, well, I say since June of last year of 2023, I would have had the ideal setup done and I would have had three more runs set up with three more coops where I could have pulled my best looking standard of perfection I am Samani roosters and put one or two into each group with you know, three or four hens into each group and then been able to show at the February show that would be in Noonan, Georgia and have eggs for sale. But my health comes before money and my health comes before trying to chase down a bird. Because like I said, I'm not chasing down a bird. And all they're doing is getting healthier and living a healthy and happy life here. And with the weathers that we have had, which has been, feels like below freezing, I only lost one bird. And the reason why I lost that bird is because it was a juvenile and it was sleeping in an area that didn't have any covering. And of course he was black. He was a rooster roulette, but he was black with a whole bunch of white toes and white feathers in him. It was sad to see that he went, but stupidity does happen within chickens. Darwinism exists. You know, and some of them are smarter than the others. And a lot of them are smarter than the others. Like that girl that sleeps on top of that coop. I've got a boy that sleeps inside the pole barn. I've got three roosters and two hens that sleep 50 feet up in a tree. Let me see if I can show you where that tree is. There's my pole barn. That shows my pole barn. This tree that's bending right here, they sleep up here every night and love it. <laughs> and I've never, the same five have been up there since the beginning of summer. No owl, no hawk. Nothing has taken them, so they have to have a secret. I just haven't been told what it is yet. But the rest of them will go into the coop at night when the sun starts setting, which it's getting very close. Because right now, recording, if I step out of the shade of a tree, it's 5 o'clock in Georgia. So within the next 45 minutes, they will be all going to their separate coops. Um... 
They all have their own individual places where they go. Monster gets to choose where he goes. He is the lead rooster here. And he sleeps in one of the three. And he has no problem with that. He does not sleep in this tunnel one behind me that's next to the donkeys. That's like the kids area. Because that, ha that started last summer with a whole bunch of offspring that I couldn't take care of because I was ill. And he chooses where he wants to go. And I let him out first every morning so everybody knows he's still king. So it's one of those things that you have to really think about. Do you want to spend money on two by fours and plywood and paint and make sure that it's in the ordinances of your city or county and that your neighbors don't care that you have crowing things next to you? Or do you just want to spend 10 bucks a dozen eggs for organic at the grocery store, depending on where you live? It all depends. The one nice thing about buying eggs at the grocery store, you don't have to pay for testing. You don't have to buy birds. You don't have to buy feed. You don't have to clean up after them. You don't have to build a coop. You don't have to know chicken math. I could probably rattle off 20 more that I cannot just come up with my head right now. But you don't have to do anything except open up a carton. And when you open up that carton and you pull that carton off the shelf, you better turn it to its side and you look for three digits. It will start with a zero. And today is the 31st of January. And if you see 031, then that means the 31st day of the year, which is a Julian calendar, is what day the eggs were laid upon. And usually by the time that they hit the store, they're anywhere between two and four weeks old. So you only have a few more weeks left to actually physically eat those eggs. Now, as a farmer myself, I don't date any of my cartons or nothing. I take a pencil, a number two pencil, and I write the Julian date on every single egg. So today, all eggs will be saying 31. And I know that I can keep them on the counter about three months because my house is cold. It's at like 68. They're not in the sun. They're not under a cabinet with lights. That is the biggest problem is heat and sunlight that will turn your eggs in a heartbeat and will rot and then you don't know. If you're buying from a farmer, which I highly suggest you buy from a local farmer, then you learn a little bit from that farmer because that farmer should have an egg handler's license, which is like an LED light that's you know, got a little rubber thing on the end that you can stick the candle inside, the egg inside of it, and the candle would tell you, you know, if it's black, then it's bad because somebody tried to hatch it and you didn't pull it in enough time as a farmer, or there could be blood splatter inside of it because something happened to the hen in the middle of it building in her tract. It happens, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen, and nothing's grosser than cracking an egg into your pan without looking at it, and then your entire dish is ruined. I suggest everybody either use the flashlight on the back of your camera or get a LED flashlight where you can actually, when you're picking up real live eggs from a farmer, that you actually look at that egg to see through it. And if you see a small floating yolk and there might be something small inside of it, you're good. And if you want to be on the double, careful, oh my God, I don't want to catch anything because, you know, i am got OCD or don't want to have any microbes or I'm just fear, fearful and afraid of what I might crack, crack it into a bowl. And then pour that into whatever dish you're making. And then crack each one separately because it's easier to throw away what's in that bowl and wash that bowl and get a new bowl than it is to change your batter or clean up your whole entire pan where you just made scrambled eggs or whatever you're trying to make with eggs or your smoothie, you know? You don't want to ruin all that. You want the qualities of it being the most organic that you can possibly get 
And I know that in California right now that avian influenza is going crazy. And I highly suggest to everybody in California, find a local farmer, find one in your neighborhood, find one within your county. There are websites, the uh, NPIP, look that up, the poultry improvement program.org is what I believe it is. Um, look it up, look, click your state, find your state, find somebody in your area that is certified and has clean birds. And that means their eggs will be clean, whether it be Guinea, whether it be duck, whether it be an emu, an ostrich, or a chicken. Anything that lays an egg will be there, even quail. And you buy from them. You put money back into the area, you help that farmer build, and not make it a hobby, actually make it an income, and then you get quality product. And you know where it came from, the source. You're not getting it from Pennsylvania and having it be put into the back of a pickup truck or a semi-trailer to be cooled to go all the way to California so that you can buy it for $12 a dozen. If you're gonna be paying $12 a dozen, I'll ship you eggs from Georgia. But no, find local. Find somebody who has it. Make connections. And if you know somebody down the street, hold on. Psh, that's enough. Psh. If you know somebody down the street that has chickens and they're not MPIP and you trust them and you know that they're not feeding them horrible feed and, you know, body parts or anything like that and there's quality stuff within them, then buy from them. You know, recycle your egg cartons and take them to them and say, hey, how much would you charge me for 12? I'm gonna just come over here and show you because they're munching, they're munching. They make a mess. But when all of that is gone, they'll work on everything down here at the bottom and they'll clean it all up. So being a farmer is not easy. It's not easy getting up in the middle of the night when your dog starts alerting because he hears something. Um, it's heartbreaking to come out and find $3,000 worth of chickens destroyed by one fox. That fox had the best coat because he ate organic for six and a half weeks. So... He was caught by a professional trapper, but that's not the point. The point was, I lost $3,000 worth of birds that I could have sold or I could have bred to. And there's no way to recoup that. There's no insurance plan that will fix that. I'm not deterring you from being a chicken farmer. I'm not deterring you from doing something that maybe your kids will love more than you. But don't expect your kids to take care of them. Just like that puppy. Just like that kitten. Yeah. Cats are much easier because the litter box goes a long way. Puppies, you got to walk outside in the rain and the cold. Cats, you can just shh, let them go. Chickens, you got to come out here. Doesn't matter if you have automatic gates. You still got to come out here and look. You got to make sure that they're still taken care of. They're my animals. They're my farm animals. They're not my pets. I do not claim any of them for my pets. Here comes Monster. He's such a big boy. He's so beautiful. He's lost a lot of his comb through the last couple of winters. So he has a very short comb. I can't even get down to the level of how big he is. The last time I measured him, he was a half an inch, a half an inch shorter than three feet. So that just tells you how big he is. And being organic and being certified, I don't allow people to come on my property because vehicles that come on my property, like any delivery company that I have to buy online and deliver, I don't want to say those names, but you know what I'm talking about. Any of those, they've been on your farm, they've been on the neighbor's farm, they've been at the grocery store, they've stopped somewhere else down the street to deliver something. Um, maybe they have chickens at their at their house or some, I don't know where their tires have been. I don't know where their feet have been. Every single person that delivers to my house knows 
not to walk in the dirt, not to get near my birds. And because I want to make sure that my biosecurity is still safe. Safe for my birds, safe for my customers, safe for the bird's offspring, and safe for my farm. I don't want something to transfer from one bird to another. Like avian influenza would transfer from one bird to another. It would transfer this entire flock within probably about three hours. And I'd have to make a phone call and every single bird would be put into a back of a semi truck and poof, poof, they're gone. Because that's one of the things they're trying to combat to make sure that it's not going to have this problem. <coughs> so with California having this problem and they're having it at commercial levels, it hasn't hit most of the backyard yet, but it's hitting commercial levels. A lot of these commercial places you might be driving by in any state and you might see a retaining pond. Might inquire to find out what's going into that retaining pond. Retaining ponds normally don't just have runoff from houses or anything like that. They might have runoff from feces from the building going into it. If that's the case, they might be using the runoff as the water to feed those birds within the building kind of gross, but I know of three or four places so far within the United States where that's happened. And I no longer go to the grocery store to buy that brand because of that. Um, I think that's inhumane. I think it's wrong. It's unethical. Um, but it's one of those things you got to look at. They have fresh, mine have fresh water all the time. It comes straight from a well. Uh, if it's frozen outside, I've got a heater strip in it so that it, you know, unfreezes. They have several waterers around and the donkeys have water. And trust me, they're always in there stealing their water too because they're in that area. I've got a few of them that will actually walk down to the creek and drink out of the creek without any problem. Why? I have no idea. But they, they're roosters, so, you know their guys they think they're big and cool but if you have questions or if you have concerns or you have anything that you want to comment please put it below down here I'll be more than happy to try to answer this I am not a professional I am not you know 50 years experience of doing this I've only got like four years underneath my belt with the guineas five because I started with guineas. But that's what I wanted. That's what I needed. And it worked for my tick problem in the middle of the woods. And then I got chicks. And chicken math came to play. And then I figured out which ones I liked the most. And then it just blew up from there. <laughs> but if you want to do this, you can do it at a small scale. You can do it at a larger scale. You can do it for your family. You can do it for your neighborhood. People can get involved. It could be a community thing, like, you know, the community of your neighborhood to do it. If somebody's got the property, which I think would be really great experience for everybody, including kids. There's a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done on a daily basis. Nothing major. You can do huge cleanups a couple times a year, like I do. I mean... I get head to toe. I look like gas mask walking into, you know, napalm kind of look and pull out pressure washer and pressure wash things and scrape off with flathead shovels and start them all over again, you know, so that they get a good scrub down at the beginning of spring and get them going. And I do that once or twice a year. I did it last spring. I don't know if I'll be able to do it this spring, but I'll get some of it out. But they all have clean nesting boxes to lay eggs. Every nesting box, if it's not in the coop, like it's in the dog kennel that's out here, that dog kennel was actually designed to put a hen and her chicks in so that nobody would eat them. A predator wouldn't be able to get to them. But they would be able to be outside, to be able to poop outside and still be covered and still be able to stay warm. And it's been the place where the girls have decided they were going to lay their eggs. So 
being a member of Costco, you always have a box to bring home your stuff. So I put the box in there. I put a empty feed bag underneath it to keep it so it was waterproof. And they lay their eggs in there. And I get six or eight right now. Last summer, I was getting about 16 to 19 a day. We're gearing back up because we're getting more light. So that's helping. I don't give them artificial light. I give them a light that comes on so I can see in the coops, but it's not turned on early and kept on late. It, I don't want to mess up their ry rhythm of sleep and their laying ability. That's up to them. But if that box gets wet, it gets thrown away and I recycle it. I had one box that was on top of the dog kennel that was there for an entire year. It is now being recycled in the burn barrel because the rain got it, it went sideways and it destroyed the entire box, the hay, everything. Threw it away, done. And those girls are upset because they don't have that area, but now they go inside the dog kennel and they lay their eggs there or they lay it in the three in the donkey barn area in there. And they're happy. I do have one that decides that when she's walking, she lays it and it's out. I haven't figured out why she does that. She just does. So, but I hope you would learn something about this. And if you have any questions, like I said, please post it. I appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, go to my Facebook page, look at Instagram. I'm out there everywhere. Remember, my name is Tara Haynes. I have Nevea Sanaya, which is Haynes Heaven spelled backwards for my farm because this is my piece of heaven. And I'm reliving my youth by being a woman-owned business farmer. So thank you and have a blessed day.